Hello and welcome to Shelf Centered. This is kind of a new segment I've been just debating doing and uh, because you know what, Daniel Green doesn't have a monopoly on fantasy news. I don't even think he has a trademark on it. Um, and he does it way better anyway, so <laughs> you don't even need me to do it. But I, I have a little bit, I guess, different of a focus. It's my own opinions on it and who doesn't need more fantasy news in their life? That's my approach to it. I definitely don't have his energy or the flowingness of said news, but, and I, I'm not even gonna call it fantasy news. I, we're working on this. We're, we're working, we're, it's, <laughs> we're shopping it right now, okay? Uh, but right now I'm going with the shelf-centered SFF scoop, because that's kind of newsy. Uh, so, <laughs> the SCSS. All right, well, that's maybe a little. The SCSFFS, that's also terrible. Uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get there. Anyway, uh, we'll jump into it. So there's a couple different things I wanna address. Uh, I just, I think, I think Daniel Green's got it down with, it's, it's more, it's a weekly update, but without kind of some of the things that I feel like maybe in mine get a little monotonous, but I can talk about what's going on, what I'm looking forward to as far as books, biggest anticipations, those kind of things. I kind of miss doing that when I'm not doing my weekly updates like I used to do. Uh, maybe even throw in a break for something here or there. Like, I'm, I'm also bringing back a segment I used to do back in the day. <laughs> um, so we'll see. Yeah, anyway, you check it out. We'll see how this goes and see what I need to add or change to it. But I thought this was uh, a good chance to start it off. So books, what books am I looking forward to at this time? So what, what books am I, am I looking at, am I interested in, or kind of what, what's kind of the news, right? What's, what's, that's what we're getting at is what's the scoop? What's the scoop on what's the latest books that are either coming out or what's going on with them. So the biggest one I'm always looking at is Brandon Sanderson, we all know. Um, right now, we'll get to others that are kind of big, but uh, do I care as much? Not as much, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, in books, The Lost Metal got itself a couple of covers lately. I wanted to pop those up. I have to say, I think I prefer the UK version. I, I haven't been preferring them all the time. Usually I, that was a given that it would be a, a UK versions. Uh, I actually like the Stormlight Archive US versions better than the UK versions. I just think Michael Whalen, I mean, maybe it's because he did the Dragon Prince series, I don't know, but I just, his artwork is so good to me. Just, just screams fantasy books to me, because I'm old. So, um, I am, since we're on, on Sanderson, I, I did check out his progress bar and I'll pop that up. I'm a little disheartened to see that we're in June and he's got a 7% progress bar going for the Stormlight Archive number five. It's a little concerning. We've been told that there's some, uh, it's slower going than, uh, uh, you know, than he thought it was going to be, but 7% by half the year. I mean, if we're talking 8% by the end of the year, that's still only 15%. If my math is terrible as usual. Um, so, so, uh, yeah, it just doesn't bode well for me. Anyway, concerns, concerns. Okay. Uh, the next one is George R. R. Martin finally gave us an update this month. I don't even know why I check anymore. It's stupid, I know, but it's still, it's there. I'll pop it up too. Uh, but anyway, he is kind of working on it. He doesn't like giving, ever since that debacle with Feast for Crows and Dance with Dragons, he just refuses to give a real update, uh, which I get, I get. If he needs to rewrite it or trash everything like he tends to do, uh, he doesn't want to tell you that it's going to be out next week. Um, and it's a joke that it would even be out next year. So uh, take that as, as you will. Who cares, right? Um, Patrick Rothfuss has kind of an update. Again, one of these. I, I, it's one of those, like, if you want to do more works, then just finish this and move on, and especially if it's in the same world. But this is a different one. It's, uh, again, I'll show a screen capture here uh i i mean it's fine i he, he's very creative and and writes very well and it just 
I don't know why I bother anymore. It's like, it's like, a, <laughs> it legitimately is depressing. And I'm sure it's way more so for these authors that are under this kind of stress. I get it. I get it. Um, and I just, I don't have to care too much about it, I guess. Um, all right. Uh, very excited for Dread God is out for Will White. This is a book 11 in the cradle. I am on book eight. So we're getting there. I'm getting caught up. Uh, I could have already been there. It, it would have been easy to do. Uh, I just have other TBR that I'm trying to keep up with and, and Cradle's not all at the top of that list. But I, I find it very hard to go too long without adding another Cradle into my, into my list. But Dread God is coming out. It's really exciting. Check, I mean, I would just double check on, uh, and I'll put some links below in the description. But Will White tends to give some discounts around the times for other books. So if you, now is usually, usually at the time of him releasing another book is a great time to jump into the series. Usually unsold is dirt cheap anyway, no matter what time of year and what time you want to get into it. All right, book that is just catching my eye and I think catching the eye of, 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 of books of Twitter and uh, everything, anyone that I know, but uh, Lightblade, and I'm going to mispronounce his name, I'm so sorry, is Emil uh, Akhtar. It just, this, it looks so good and it looks right up my alley. It looks like uh, kind of a cradle, maybe a progression type fantasy. Anyway, let me know if I'm wrong on that. It just looks so cool and the reviews are just really stunning. Uh, Gunmetal Gods has been on my list and so this is an author I'm definitely paying attention to. Just just gets been get, getting bigger and bigger and cooler and cooler, just more interesting things out there. Uh, very exciting. This is one, this is an author that I have been meaning to read for some time. There's the Eli Monpress series uh, that she has, but Rachel Aaron, uh, The Last, let's see, The Last Stand of Mary Good Crow. Just another new series from Rachel Aaron, and I just, I keep hearing such great things. It's, just, it's a matter of time before I read her work, so uh, that one looks good. Maybe that's a good place to start. Probably not since I'm already in the middle of a million series. I might as well go to one that's actually completed, which I believe Eli Monpress series is, and I just hear great things about that. All right, then the last one I wanted to throw out there was Sons of Darkness by Gaurav Mahanti. I, I look at it. It looks cool. Look at the description. I'll let you do that. It just it looks really exciting, and I, I again, this popped up on Twitter, and... I can't say I'm not, I haven't already fallen for it. So that looks great to me. That's my kind of book update, uh, like anticipated books, what's going on in the book world for the big ones. Uh, anyway, those are what I'm looking at and interested in right now. Let's take a break, okay? All right, today in mispronouncing fantasy names. This is what I'm bringing back here. Mispronouncing fantasy names. We've got Bauchelaine. Bauchelaine. Bouchelaine? No. Bauchelaine. Bauchelaine? Bauchelaine? Anyway, where is it from? You know it. I already know you know it. Um, let me know how badly I mispronounced it. I told you it's mispronouncing fantasy names. That's how I pronounce it. Bauchelaine. What do you, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> All right. Now I wanted to get into just some media, some what's going on in the media right now. Uh, we, uh, at least just for me and what I'm interested in, the big one that was just announced was Jon Snow getting a spinoff series for Game of Thrones. I, I'll be honest. I, part of me is like, can we just wait till George finishes the series and then kind of like figure out, hey, that's a joke. I'm, that's, <laughs> that's never gonna happen. So, uh, but it, it's hard to just have anyone do Game of Thrones work without something at least to outline and, and, and kind of go off of. Maybe, I don't know. And So we'll see. I don't think we know a whole ton right now. Um, the new series is coming up, The House of the Dragon at least is, is following the, the Fire and Blood, thank you. Uh, for my assistant that's not here, my imaginary friend, thank you. Um, Fire and Blood, uh, at least it's following that. And I'm going to have a, a video coming up. I want to talk about that a little bit. So I just, I don't know. I'm kind of like, I don't, it's telling that there really haven't been that many people rewatching Game of Thrones that I, that I know of. And that's how hard that last season was to take. 
everyone, you know, rewatches The Office or, and I know it's not, this isn't a comedy or anything, but it's good shows are rewatched and Game of Thrones was so good for so long, but that horse drawing is so accurate. Uh, it, it's just, it's not good. That last season just killed it so badly and it's hard to go, well, they were off George R. R. Martin's outline, out, off of his plan and they weren't, they just, the cards were stacked against them at that point, but also I just felt like they kind of, they phoned it in and wanting to just be done. And then they ruined the Dan, what is it, Dan Weiss and Benioff, just their D&D, &D, they, they, they just didn't care. It was pretty clear. So I could go on about that series. <laughs> um, uh, another thing, um, I wanted to talk about was Moon Knight. Moon Knight, I think, had a great start, and it was really fun. I worry that it might just be a one season done and done thing, and I that would be such a shame. It, it's just such a good premise. It was so well acted. I think one of my just major criticisms, and I know these are the hardest ones, is where it's like, well, what they should have done is, uh, I just, I felt like the focus is, I mean, he's kind of like, like, even crazier Batman is pretty much what Moon Knight is. And if it would have maybe focused a little more on him just being Batman for a while, for the couple first couple episodes, and then getting into the craziness, uh, or at some point in the middle, kind of starting out with him being, a, you know, having the, the voices and whatnot, I just feel like there were a couple different ways to approach this to really get more mainstream uh, into this. I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, or, or more popularity. I just, I'm concerned because there's rumors that it's just not gonna have a second season. I think Oscar Isaac, I've, been, I've said this before, I'm on record, he should be in everything, uh, ever since watching him in Dune and a couple other things, what else? I mean, in Star Wars too. Uh, he just did, he nailed it, he did a great job uh, for what he was given in Star Wars. Um, but I just, Moon Knight just seems like had a lot of potential, but a lot of times it was wasted. And, and I've heard, I think the criticism is accurate when it's like, just when it's getting good, then it, you can do the blank and then you don't have to pay for the action scene. And it's like, it worked the first episode, I felt like. I felt like that was good, especially in the, the, the driving scene where it actually created more tension when someone's just waking up out of the blue and having to drive backwards or something like that is something that works but to keep doing that and not actually show you got to show the payoff we need the payoff and that just didn't do it again there's just a couple little things that could have just I felt like been done a little bit better to get us into this but I I still have hope because it's not uh, I didn't I didn't uh, didn't drop the ball too bad uh, in my opinion, I thought it was fine. I just it maybe has dropped the ball enough to be uh, just a mediocre series, and I worry about that. But I, I really enjoyed a lot of parts about it, about Moon Knight, and just the character in general. Uh, the more you look into that comic, I need to read the whole comic because it just sounds nuts and just awesome. And I need to get more of it and find out more about what is it, Jake? <laughs> anyway, so those are. That is my shelf-centered scoop. Maybe that's what it is. The SC, the SCS. <laughs> Man, this is bad. But anyway, uh, let me know if you want more of this or less of this. <laughs> but I felt like I could still do somewhat of an update and keep things kind of regular because there's always kind of news that I just want to talk about and, and give opinions on. Uh, and I have a platform to do that, right? Uh, anyway, not trying to stomp on, on Daniel Green's toes as if I could. Uh, I do, I just respect what he does so much. And uh, I'll be honest, I'm just trying to be like him and cool like him. Did, I, did it work? Dang it. Um, anyway, uh, thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate, again, cannot thank you guys enough for getting us to over a thousand subscribers. I just, it, it, it just is crazy to see the support that I've been given over this last year. And I will see you next time. Bye. The scoop, the scoop, the fantasy scoop. I don't know. The shelf-centered scoop. Uh, I don't know. <laughs>